Well, good morning, boys and girls. Really glad to join you for this assembly. I have to say right at the outset that we don't have Amika and Lola or Pigeonald with us today, but I hope to have them next time. So uh, sorry they won't be joining us today. I do want to talk about somebody else. I want to talk about King David, who is a really a, a great hero uh, from the Bible. And you might remember him as having defeated as a boy a great soldier, a giant, who was called Goliath. Yeah, David had many good things about him, and he was loved by God, and he loved God. And so he's a wonderful example for us in so many ways. But he also, just like us, did some bad things. In fact, he did some things that were really quite bad indeed. So we can learn from David both the times when he was faithful to God, and we can also learn from his failures and learn how God dealt with him then. So today we're really going to be talking about taking responsibility for our actions. We often like to take responsibility when we've done something well, get an award for it. But what about when things don't go so well? In fact, when we do something wrong. Well, King David wanted something that belonged to somebody else. In fact, it was the wife of his friend Uriah and uh, her name was Bathsheba. Now, Uriah belonged to Bathsheba, and Bathsheba belonged to Uriah because they were married. King David was married to someone else. David belonged to her and, and she to him. And Uriah was an old, old friend of David's. David had been uh, a soldier for a long time, and as well as king, and Uriah had been a faithful friend to him. They had been through thick and thin together. So many things that they'd experienced. And Uriah had been a good, loyal, old friend to David. Well, David betrayed his old friend. It's a really sad story. He did something wrong. And what David did really hurt Bathsheba. It hurt Uriah. And it hurt David's wife. And it hurt David. And it was not at all what God would want him to do. So... David's wrongdoing, the Bible's word for it, is sin. That's what David would call it, as we'll get to in a moment. And his sin was getting worse and worse and worse. And uh, he had a choice. Would he take responsibility for something that he had done? Or would he try to hide his sin? Well, let's just think about ourselves for a moment. Ooh. Ooh, lots of people coming to visit the school, which is nice. Hello. It's like we have a sporting contest at the school here. Anyway, so David's wrongdoing, the Bible calls it sin, and it was getting worse and worse. He was hiding and hiding and hiding, not taking responsibility for his actions, but trying to hide his sin. Well, let's think about us. Have any of us been caught doing the wrong thing? How does it feel when that happens? Don't you feel a sort of a worry and a heaviness? Well, when you have that experience, you'll be able to identify with David. He wanted to hide what he had done. So that actually, just like it does for you and me, it makes things worse. David first tried to trick Uriah, uh, but uh, he was not able to do so. Uriah was a very honest and honorable man. And eventually, unable to trick Uriah to cover up what he had done, David, to cover his sin, ordered his general to send Uriah into the front line of the battle and then to retreat and leave Uriah there. So what would happen with Uriah if he was left out in the front lines all alone like that? That's right, Uriah was sadly killed in battle. Uriah was killed by the enemy, but it was really David who had made it happen. David had sought to cover up his sin instead of taking responsibility. It cost Bathsheba her husband. It cost David his friend. It cost Uriah his life. And God was not pleased. So what should God have done there? Should he go and, and punish David? Well, this is what God did. He sent his prophet, his prophet. His prophet is the one who speaks for God. And he sent his prophet to King David. The prophet's name was Nathan. And here's where we'll pick up that story. It's from 2 Samuel and chapter 12. And I'll just read 
that story. Well, I guess what we have is a story within a story. I'm telling you a story about David, and Nathan, when he went to King David, told him a story. Here's that story. The Lord sent Nathan to David. When Nathan came to David, he said, There were two men in a town, one rich and the other poor. The rich man had a very large number of sheep and cattle, but the poor man had nothing except one little lamb that he had bought. The poor man raised that lamb, and it grew up with him and his children. It shared his food, drank from his cup, and even slept in his arms. That lamb was like a daughter to him. Now a traveler, a guest, came to visit the rich man. But the rich man refrained from taking one of his own sheep or cattle to prepare a feast for the traveler who had come to visit. Instead, he took that one lamb that belonged to the poor man and prepared it for the meal for the traveler who had come to visit him. King David burned with anger against the man and said to Nathan, As surely as the Lord lives, the man who did this deserves to die. We have to remember that King David had begun his life as a shepherd, and he was very sensitive to this story. That man must pay for that lamb four times over because he did such a thing and had no pity. Then the prophet Nathan said to David, You, O king, are the man. Well, David realized what he had done that he had uh, behaved just like that man in the story towards Uriah and Bathsheba. So his response, I have sinned against the Lord. David was finally now taking responsibility for his actions. So this story tells us something. It tells us we can't hide our sin from God. We may be able to hide our actions from mom and dad for a little while if we do something we shouldn't or whatever it might be, but God sees the secrets of our hearts and he knows our words and our thoughts and our actions. And God was determined that David would take responsibility for his actions. Why? Because actually he was determined that once David did so and he turned from his sin, that God would forgive him. And so we have a wonderful Psalm in the Bible, Psalm 51, which tells that story of David coming clean before God and being cleansed and forgiven by God. It's such a relief to be forgiven. Once we've taken responsibility for our actions, we can seek the forgiveness of the people we've wronged, but also of God. God wanted David to take responsibility for his actions so that David could be forgiven, and he could then live in God's way. A little later on in the Bible, after Jesus had come, the Apostle John wrote this, if we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, we, we lie to ourselves. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So ultimately, this cleansing of sin comes through Jesus. Jesus is the one who ultimately is the way that God will forgive our sins and that justice was done. We may be thinking, David should have been punished or that rich man should have been punished. Well, Jesus steps in and offers God's forgiveness to us so we can be thankful for him. So boys and girls, there it is. I, I think I have a little story I can tell, which is a bit gross, but uh, my, um, my brother, my brother, he's, he's a very accomplished man and so forth, but when he was a very little boy, after he'd been toilet trained and so forth, he had a little accident in his pants and he was embarrassed by it because he was old enough not to have that happen, but young enough that it could still happen. And so he hid it away, he took his pants and he hid them away in the back of a drawer, thinking he could hide it away and do it. But of course, eventually when, when people knew what was happening, they knew it was there, the sin was discovered. That wasn't really a sin, that was a scared little boy. But um, his mistake that he covered up, and his co it's so much about the cover up, isn't it? About lying to cover up what we're embarrassed or sad or what we've done wrong. Well, it's always gonna be found out eventually. And God found out David and he sent his prophet so that David could be forgiven. So we too need to take responsibility for our actions, come clean before others and, and apologize and make it right where it's possible to do so and seek the forgiveness of God, who very kindly with his mercy and love for us has sent Jesus so that we can be forgiven. Well, I'm gonna pray, shall we bow our heads? Our loving God, we thank you that you call us to take responsibility for our actions. When we do wrong things, help us to 
come clean. And thank you for the forgiveness that we can have through Jesus. We remember his invitation. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Thank you when we have the burden of guilt or covering up our wrongdoing. Jesus can relieve us of that burden. Help us to live in a way that pleases you. Thank you for our mummies and daddies. Thank you for our friends. Thank you for our teachers. Help us to be loving to them today as well. Amen. Amen. Hope to see you soon, children. Thank you. Thank you.